since December. I found an artist that I really liked on Pinterest, and I ended up contacting him. And um, I ended up just going to his workshop in Italy. What was that? A couple all? weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I went for five days outside of Florence and I had a workshop for him. Um, so, um, I'm going to show you a lot of different painting techniques that I use. Some he didn't teach, some he does teach. And um, I don't know. I think we'll start with the things that I need to have dry in between layers because when I when I do most of these, there, there's layers of color. So, and it, you never know how it's going to turn out. It depends on how much water you use or not, you know, not a lot of water. It will come out stronger if you don't use a lot of water. It will come out more washed if you use a lot of water. So normally when I prep my clay, I, because I always like to try to put a white slip on the base. Just because like a canvas, like when you're a painter, you want a white canvas because it makes the colors Black. stand Carrie, out better. Carrie, okay. you're working on greenware, yes? What? You're working on greenware. Yes, yes, I'm working on greenware. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's still a little softer than other hard. Okay. If you if you do it too soft, once you start spraying water on it, and it's just going to go, you know what I mean? Then you're going to try to pick it up because this is a messy process because you might be using three colors on here and spritzing it with water, and you're going to have a puddle of water, you know. It's, so you do want it leather hard, and um, you know, kind of. You can you know you can comfy it if you want, but it, it's. Um, I could still move it a little bit. Anyway, so I put white slip first. I always like to do my little thing, which is put a, a colored slip on the bottom. I use, you know, that's kind of my dealing, my sign, my signature thing, the grog on the bottom. And then, then the colors will flow on top of it. So as you can see here, you're gonna just see a little bit of the darkness. You're gonna see the darkness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all of these, you're gonna probably see a little bit of the darkness. Mm -hmm. So it just really depends on, again, how much water you use. So, um, I'm gonna start off by painting some colors on here and showing you how thin they should be, kind of how thin. Again, it's going to be subjective. You're going to make a lot of bad pots, like because, like this pot. It doesn't have as much color as I like. You can still see the colors in there, but I would have liked more white. I, I probably used too much water to water down the white. Okay. After the first, you know. I'll take it. The, it just, <laughs> on the top white. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start with some color. And it's best if you put them on literally with a bigger brush. Okay. And we're going to start. So you're gonna... using clay slips? These are all clay slips. Okay. I use mostly all clay slips. Always going to use clay slips in the beginning. Always. I might use underglazes afterwards. Okay. Or oxide. Oxide. Okay. You know what I mean? I might use that <coughs> afterwards. But the base is always going to be a <coughs> color slip. A, slip. a color slip that, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. With and I'm not going to put it everywhere because I don't want it everywhere. But this is this is pretty light slip. And I, see how I'm watering it? And it's going to drip down. And it's going to go <laughs> over that color. Did you use any spray? Water spray? Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you that. spray the water? You don't have to. No. You don't have to spray it down. That's just what I like to do. Carrie, do you thin out the slips oh, at yeah. all? Because you should. Oh, look at that. Okay. So before I put the next color on, this has to dry. 
and I might put something here. You see how watery this slip is already? It's, just, it's very watery. But I want it to run a little bit, so I'll spray it white on it because this is just going to be like, um, wait a minute. I actually put it gently because I want to go through here. I don't want to really cover up my little circles. So I probably would spray the water right on the circles so it would disperse the white and not be on the circles so much. Let me get it wet. I know I don't want to cover up <laughs> too much of the, the black. This is just going to be a single, simple piece. See, so it just looks like it's glazed a bit. Do you have to use a cookie when you're firing? Not when you do grain waste. I know, but I just want to. If you glaze the whole thing, if you glaze it. Only when you glaze. This is not glaze. Right, okay. That's the thing. I don't use a cookie because I don't glaze them. Outside, no. Oh, okay. I just thought because of the cleaning. See, so it sort of has this. A little glaze over the, a little wash over the black. So I usually just stick my hand in it, wipe it off, stick it on a dry piece of paper towel. <laughs> See how this one I didn't use a lot of colors because I know I'm going to use a color here, solid color, solid color there, solid color. This is pretty thick, so it's not going to, um, it's not going to run. And it's streaking, you can see. So I kind of wipe it out a bit. And I'm up, I like that. See, it, it's really, it's touchy. You have to feel it out. You know what you like of the design. See, because this one's a little thicker, I have to work it a little bit more. So that's that on that. Could okay. Gary, what? I gotta let this dry. So, what? So what I'm gonna do without a few other things while these are gonna set up. 
Karen, does yeah. this technique work better with a groggy clay? Yeah. Rather than I, a well, I, 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 no, not necessarily. Oh, no. Okay. I just like to have a texture. I like my organic, gritty yeah. look. That's why I put more grog on it. That's just what I like. Right. If, if, if you wanted it more sleek and not have any grit, so I'm just, I'm just this is an example of underglaze because, in this short notice, I had one week, I didn't have time to give, do any bisque wear to show you how to, I underglaze, okay? But this is an example. This is all underglaze. Over, over okay. the slip? Mm -hmm. Over the slip, over the white slip? No, after it's been, okay, after oh. it's been bisque fired. After it's been bisfired, this is all painted on. And I forgot to bring my bottle. Of, if you want to bring a, a thing of underglaze out, just show you. But I use um, underglaze. Now I also use a charcoal pen pencil. It's for so you can see these these X's and these lines. This is all charcoal. This is all charcoal. Yeah. The line I use here, charcoal pen. Do you put that on then before on. you glaze? I mean, before you uh, fire the glaze? Yes. Glaze fire. Okay. Now you can see this pot's not shiny, it's not glaze, except I, I like to only, sometimes I like to glaze just a portion. Yeah. So I only okay. glaze those pieces and clear. And the inside too? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'll get to that. Uh, so those pieces, this piece, and that piece is the only piece I put transparent on. But then the rest I use underglaze, and like I said this is. And it didn't have any color slip on it at all. Okay, so Terry, when you say that's a charcoal pencil, is it an underglaze pencil? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It is an underglaze. Yeah. yeah. It's an underglaze. Mm -hmm. Black cone tent fires up to cone tent. So. I usually I miss. I usually like to coat them in black. Inside. This is um, St. John's, mm -hmm. and uh, you can use matte. You can use any color you want. But I like to use black because when after I dip it and pour it around, you always have black. You know, you have to clean off. So I wipe it into my yeah. thing. So the black goes into the grit. You can oh, see. Okay. Any, any, a lot of it will go into the, the markations I made, because I always make markations. Now, in this case, I went over it a little bit more with, um, you can do black. Um, Designer and liner. You can put it on bisque or you can put it on glaze. And I just draw it on there like that. But I always like the black just because I, I like to push the black into the. Uh... So you can see how this is really kind of more transparent. If you yeah. Look closely. You can see how it's more transparent. There, and this you can tell. It was it was either an underglaze. I think it was an underglaze. And these, and these were the slips that were underneath. All this was like slips underneath. And then I only clear glazed on top of the piece, some pieces that I want to have pop. Okay. And I, I guess I forgot to glaze the inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can buy them and they have one, I don't know, three different palettes, choices, I think. Just, I, if you want, want a dribbly effect like I did on this one, just let it dribble down. It, it wouldn't be so okay, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and again on this, I used white, but then I, you can see how it's even more of a white brush stroke. Mm -hmm. So I use white underglaze. And I put that on, swipe it on afterwards. Mm -hmm. And you can also water it down if you want to. So, um, if it's your own, 
Please don't water down our underblazes. <laughs> no, on, on, while it's on there, you can spray it. While it's on there, you can spray it. You can spray it, okay. Yeah, not, not, yeah. And if you, you know, if you come and you look close, closely, when, yes. and I kind of like this, that, but if you, if you put your underglaze on a little thick, you get crazing on that. Mm -hmm. So I have crazing on some of it. And again, these are indentations, these little circles, but when it came out, it did and when I pushed the black into it, for, no, I didn't use black, that's why. So I wanted to, I use this. So, Gary, who makes it? I wanted to paint it. And, and then I painted, I glazed the whole thing in clear, okay? So these are all underglazes. Is that the, is the pink slip, the light pink? No, that's called blush underglaze. Oh, it is. Yeah. And um, and then again, black in there. So you can see the difference when you do when you glaze a whole pot and you don't. So you just get a matte finish when when you fire it without putting any glaze on it. Well, like I said, I often will put colored glaze. I mean, colored glaze. I might just have painted colored glaze on that. Or I can't tell. I could have done clear glaze with an under glaze. You don't take meticulous notes. No, I don't. Everything you do. I don't. <laughs> Just kidding. I know. I don't either. I see Bray you doing meticulous <laughs> notes, and I don't. Okay, I'll I'll take your notes. Okay. <laughs> so this. Okay. So the teacher who I sort of learned this from originally. I mean, he uses oxides inside. Ooh. Well. Doesn't work so well. <laughs> and I even try to stain. No. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it because it just, the stain just flakes off and oxide doesn't look so great. <clears throat> so don't do it. <laughs> um, so your teacher only use oxide in, inside, but nothing else? He, he does? Uh -huh. Yeah, he uses oxides in the inside. Nothing else? I don't know. Their oxides were really different because when I went to use them, they stained the piece. Well, again, they were doing chrome paint or something. So when I went to put the oxide on, I went, it just sucked right in the clay, and, you, and you're like scraping, trying to get it off where you don't want it, and it wouldn't come off. So it, you know, different firing, different you know, mm -hmm. recipes might work for some people. So this is, these are oxides. So you have the um, red iron and the black. Again, I, I always, I put the red on first. Just brush really? it off. <coughs> well, I don't, it's how it comes in the jar. I did, how whatever it is in the jar, I put it on. And then I will we'll sand over the waste paper basket and kind of rub it off, you know. And then I'll put black, I mean the magnesium oxide. Is that what it's called? Magnesium? No, this one. If I can add something yeah. here. Everybody has a different level of tolerance for toxicity. The most cautious people say, I gotta dry those when I take a break, but I'm just gonna show you a couple other things. Now this is just, a bowl I didn't like, or whatever, it didn't come out right. So I just used acrylic paint and covered that, and I used acrylic paint on the outside. It looks great. Yeah. So it's just, you can see the, all the different possibilities. And, oh, another possibility. So since we can't get gold glaze, and I wanted gold on this, and this is a small piece I did, but I did a platter but I rimmed the whole thing in gold. So I got this, and you can do this at home. You put it on, and you bake it in your oven. Yeah, it comes in a lot of different colors. What's it called? What is that? I, it's called <laughs> P-E-B-E-O. And this is porcelain, porcelain 150. They have different types, so you're gonna, I'll leave it up here, you gotta use this type. So you don't serve dinner on it. Yeah, 
No, you don't. <laughs> no. I mean, it's for decoration. This is a candle holder. That's a bolt of, you know. Yeah. And it's on the rim of a platter that goes up like this. Yeah. I'm not eating off the gold. <laughs> But, um, and then, you know, when you want to, there's all sorts of different ways you can make lines on your things. I actually don't like this one, but it just happens to be in my purse all the time. I have little plastic ones, and it's almost like this. But you can put your own glaze in it, you can put your own underglaze in it, and then just, just doodle away, or dot away, whatever you want to do on your... So, I don't want to... All right. Back to school. Um, so Pat wanted me to show you my secret weapon. <laughs> and making me blush. I don't want to see any pots like mine out here now. Okay. Say that one more time, Carrie. No copy. Yeah. See, no, no, none of my style. Yes, very good. You can make your own style. Yes. All right. Very good. So go to the sand trap and get some grog from sand. <laughs> so don't tell I, them uh, that. So or you could buy grog. Uh, they they come in different grits. All right. And you can see, I use usually two types. I use the thick coarse and the fine. And the fine I usually brush up into the thing, so it's not like a real fine. Um, but when I when I have my pieces all laid out, you know, I've cut my, all my pieces, and, and they're flat, I go and I get some slip, and I brush on whatever color slip I want on the bottom, and I take this, and I just sprinkle it on top. Okay. What do you got there? Sand. Sand. Or sand. 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 And I, I paint, I just put it on there. And depending on whether you want it smeared looking or a, a perfect line, I tend to like a little smear. So I, I wait a little bit, but I push it up, I push it up into the painting. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is pre-assembly, right? Yes. Now when you assemble it, of course, um, when you, when you have your seams and you might not have the same color or you might not have the grog and it's up to you whether you want to fill in more more of that color that you use on the bottom or, or more grog. It's up to you. Um, I was asked about my pink, so I, I use blush. And that's the color. And... Uh, I, I haven't found any other things I like better. Really. You'll, again, you'll have to just try them out and see how it works for you. But I'll tell you one thing, you need at least three coats of the underglaze on it, you know, to take it out of the top. So, there's the grog or sand. Now, I told my husband, I get my husband a little, no, you know what, he's got in a golf cart, he's got that little thing, yeah, right. golf cart, so he just fills it. Either that, he can dig a hole in the bunker, I can't get out of him anyway. I feel bad going at the sand trap and you know yeah. All right, so I am going to use a different color, and the good thing about putting on these underneath, if you don't like it, after it comes out, in, in, after this comes out, you can go ahead and cover it up with underglaze if you don't like it. I've done that plenty of times. So we're going to use a really, uh, I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush because I want it a little bit more defined. And you see this part I'm kind of leaving because I'll probably use underglaze afterwards to color that. <laughs> now, I noticed my, the teacher I went to, he didn't wash, he didn't brush these out. He just left them there. But I kind of like it, you know, so it's up to you.
Does that stay yellow over blue or does it do the drips turn green? No, it's, it stays yellow. Yeah. But the yellow usually comes out really light, right? It does. I don't know if I bought anything that had yellow on it. Um, that pink underneath. <laughs> This is yellow. Oh, well, I don't think we do. Oh, I thought we did. Do we? I don't think so. We can ask for something because we've got yellow mace. Oh, good. So great. You don't have yellow ones. What she's using. Yeah, it's going to look like an Easter egg. It looks to me like you're adding color to the body of the purse. Did you ever do anything with any of the packaging? Yes. That's the, the, the base. So, so, it, so that you can see this under, this is the part that you, you barely see. You know, this is the part you're only going to see a little bit of blue or a little bit of blue mm -hmm. underneath there when you put the white on it. So it's um, a contrasting color. No, I do this and just paint it on. Don't water it. And you can do that, and you can certainly do that on any of your pieces. You don't have to water it down. Mm -hmm. And you can see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if it comes out bright enough, or the color you like, just, just glaze it, clear glaze it. And that's the beauty of doing it, you know, putting your colors on first. And then if you don't like it, you just use underglaze to cover it up. White is the best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of times, I don't care if it's messy because Anyway, white's going to go underneath, over it, uh, over some, some of it. And I, I like, I like the unkept look. You know, I like not totally. I had a hard time when I painted because I always wanted straight lines, and, and, you know, you know, but perfect. But you know, actually, I might just do something like that.
got something else I'm going to show you, something, a technique, and I'm kind of showing you it right now with slip, and I'll start with slip, but you can also do this with underglaze, and it's called dry brushing, when, when you're an artist, uh, you can you use a technique called dry brushing to very faintly put the color on. Right. Um, like some people would probably think, oh, I gotta get a paintbrush and I gotta paint in between the lines like that. I mean, you don't have to. I'm gonna try one with slip and then I'm gonna try one with underglaze, but just to show you. So you take a brush and you, and you get it pretty dry. You wipe it off, okay? That's why it's called dry brushing. And you're like barely, you're gonna go like this and you're gonna barely touch with your brush. It works better with underglaze, but. Um, and again, it gives you, right, you have to have, you, it's, a, you know, you have to learn the feel of this, it's like, you know. Can you hold it up so we can see it? Yeah. So it kind of just gets the tops of the ridges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I use this a lot. So it doesn't give that perfect look, which again I don't like. But it, 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 and then, and then, if I wanted to use a slip over that, mm -hmm. a white slip over that, I could. And do the same thing. Or, um, but I use that technique a lot when I okay when I when I do my uh, let me see if I can find one here. And sometimes it's not real obvious, but I'll do that on the grout. If something's too dark on the bottom, I take white underglaze, and I and I do this just so it makes those pebbles pop out a little bit more. And if I wanted this, the corners, to be either dark or white, I, I would do the same thing mm -hmm. to, on, on the top. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I use the black on the corners there, on the corners, on the edges, just to make that, accentuate that. get it out your, your bisque and then you can see where you need to make something pop a little bit more and you can do your decorations more <coughs> this is that's when I would uh, might do a totally different color I might just decide that I want to glaze over there I might want to glaze that part but I'll, I'll probably put a color on there I'll probably put, put it under a slip underneath there so do you kind of be creative as you go? Yeah. It's that kind of, that's yeah. what I like about I, the but, technique. But the, you know, Craig Underhill, he writes, he has a sketchbook and he does, you know, cool. he writes his design, he knows, he gets it, he says his inspiration from a lot of um, nature. Mm -hmm. He goes down to the beach, he sees rocks mm -hmm. or, or trees and he, he gets this color scheme. Um, if you look him up, Craig Underhill. And um, you can see that he, I mean, I know he uses landscapes. You can, you can also watch his YouTubes. His YouTubes are really, really good. And uh, that's where I basically kind of learned to do this, watching his, his tapes, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, and again, he doesn't show you everything so you just kind of have to fill in the blanks the best way you can. Except, you know, like I said, I just came back from this class. But, but um, so everything is always really thin. I mean, you're never using the, uh, these uh, like chunky. I haven't. I haven't. Not to say I won't experiment and do uh -huh. try that. Because um, when he did it, he 
he didn't thin his out as much as I thought. And if you see some of his pieces, they're very muted. They look very shabby chic. I mean, they look white almost, with a very, like this, more like this. I hint to call her a name, you know. And again, this this one was only it was only I can't remember what clay I used. I used a darker clay, but that that's just white, brushed on underglaze, and then with the whatever I must use the oxide, and that that just rubbed into all the all the crevices. I'm very brush stroke. That's what I like. I like to I like to get those colors into the brush. I like to see the brush mark. I don't like it perfectly smooth and soft. You know. So That's it's a different look. You got with the contrast. You got that yellow there to look almost gold mm. on oh, this piece. On that one? No, no the one you were just. What? You just the, it's like green. What color? Yeah. Is that? It's like Which green. one? Oh, this. That one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is weird. It, 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 I had trouble with the yellow hair. The yellow kept coming out like that. I don't know why. Yeah, we can't replicate it. No, it wasn't supposed to be that way. That's why I say you never know. You never know. But that came out yellow. But I have plenty of pieces that came out looking puke. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's not, I mean, you know, it's not, not what I wanted. I like gold color. Yeah. Yeah, I like that color. Like I said, you never know what you're going to get. I did, I did these two pieces in in, um, in Italy. I'm hiding them because I don't like them. Um, again, I don't know what kind of clay they use. I, I brought him back as bisqueware, okay, and I did the final hair. But that's turquoise. No. Yeah, and so that whole half was supposed to be turquoise glaze, huh. and it didn't come out. And I got this weird bubbling. I mean, I kind of like the bubbling. Yeah. But this color didn't even come out at all. It just like washed out, washed out. So I, I'm going to have to, um, I might have to use some of these. <laughs> <laughs> Try something. And so this one's not so bad, but this didn't come out. And this didn't come out real bright blue. And, well, that's okay. But uh, it's a little plain, you know. Um, and that's, that's his oxide inside there. That's their... That's their oxide, and that I don't I don't like it. It's, it's just, just almost like it's burned. Yeah, it's it's it looks dry and. Does it have the same effect when, like when you use the oxide? Yeah, I, it, I don't like it at all. But again, yeah, that's so that's what I came back with here on my back. <laughs> Those are expensive pots, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm going to do the final coat on here. And how about the one there with the dark circles? Well, because I'm I'm only going to make that a black and white one. Oh. Okay. And and well, I wasn't going to use this in the demo, but I might I, I I probably will use an underglaze right there and put a pop of color on here. Um, but I don't have a slip color that I want to use. So that's just going to stay like that. Carrie, for the, for the inside, if you don't use oxide, what would you use? I use I, St. John. I, you can use glaze. any glaze you want. Mm -hmm. Any glaze you want. Do um, you choose black so you can rub it down the outside? I do. I mean, uh, and I've, I've used um, this one. I didn't. No. OK. So, you know, it just try something, you know, see what you like. I just, I like the black. If you can't stand up here and you look at like this pot as opposed to the ones in black, I just like the ones in black better. Mm -hmm. If you're looking into it, if you're looking at a piece. Yeah, that's true. Um, so again, St. John's black, I think you have a matte black here, which I haven't used the matte black yet, but I've only used St. John. 
Just because I like a contrast. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's shiny inside. Mm -hmm. more, more matte on the outside. Yeah. Um, so, before I get started. Okay. This is the white again? Yeah. On now this, this is white slip? White yeah, slip. This is, that's what that's the final color. Okay. She put white on first and then she came So if you're not seeing enough color, you just spray it some more? I, I like it. <laughs> I don't like as much color on huh? it. Does the color underneath bleed through the white that you're putting on? No. Nope. You let it dry. I mean, normally I let it dry longer. So, now it looks a lot different than it did before. And then, if I want to put some more markations on it, like, you know, if I want to draw on it, stencil on it, I can do that now. It's just that it's going to stand out a little bit more than if I did it underneath the white. See, and does that charcoal pencil show? Does it burn off? I'm not going to put it on. Oh, no. No, the charcoal pen is on it. It's still exists. It's, it's kind of like, oh, it's an underglaze. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, I mean, that's the pencil. So that's the pencil. I was going to guess. I looked at it. I thought, I don't know what this is, but I don't need it. Amazon? <laughs> I don't know on Amazon. Or no, I saw it at our park. I think I might have. I'm sure Amazon has it. Amazon more expensive, more, more, more. And this is why I'm not rubbing it in a lot. You know, if you were to sit here and rub paint it in, you, you probably will mix the colors, you know? But I'm just kind of slopping it on. And again, you control it. The more water you put on it, the more sheer it will be. The colors will come out more if you want those colors. And I might put more white. Who knows? When it comes out, I don't know. It's what I'll do to it. On Amazon? Yeah. Wow. Ninety dollars for a set of ten colors. So wait, no, hold on. But do we know anything about these brands? C U Y F G H. Amazon is using Amazon is using letters and numbers. They're not using brand names. Yeah, I didn't get that one. I don't know if this is from China. I can't remember if I looked at that and it was from China or not. But they all have, or not all, but a lot of stuff now. Like this one says Y F D B underglaze pencil. Yeah. Yeah, but make sure it's cone 10. Well, I'm not buying it. No, no, no. I mean, if anybody else is going to buy it, make sure it's cone 10. Right. Okay, so that's basically done. Um, then it just has to dry. Or, or tomorrow, when that's dry, like I said, if I want to use some of my stencils or if I want to do a um, transfer. Mm -hmm. I want to poke holes in it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. But well, thank you. That's basically it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.